What I want to do today, I realize that there's there's a there, there there's really a huge amount of material in um. There, there's a huge amount of material in this uh, chap chapter eight. It co covers a lot of stuff, and then there's also um, quite a bit in in this chapter nine. So today, I think I started on the chapter eight stuff last time, and I think let me go go over that that again and try to say some more about that today, and then at least make a start on um, on, the, on explaining what a tensor product is and the relevance of that. Uh, and but then I'll, I'll finish that up next time. And so next time I'll finish up that, and then we can kind of, and then kind of review where we are because this the tensor product thing is is a good actually a good stopping point. That's where we're going to kind of finish um, talking about kind of finite dimensional state spaces and what you can do with them in quantum mechanics, and then move on to kind of a new topic of if you want to talk about how particles mo move around and about uh, position momentum, then you then you would need to start using um, some analysis in infinite dimensional state spaces. Okay, so let me start with a little bit of review from, from uh, of where I was last time. Okay, and then also, okay, so, so, so the idea, so, so the problem was what we're, tr we're trying to get at what, what are the other representations of SU2? And so, 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 that, so the problem was it really comes down to we, we know that a general representation is going to be a direct sum of these irreducible representations. So we, we just need to construct the irreducible ones. So the problem is really to, um, to classify I plus construct the irreducible representations. And if you've probably, if you've had some physics or something, you may have already seen the answer. The answer is that is given by, um, that these things are given by a, a, a non-negative integer and they're called the spin n over two representations for n is some non-negative integer. And they have dimension n plus one. But let me, but the first first part of this is to, is to classify it. So the first part of the argument is to use some, and here, here, here we're gonna use 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 the Lie algebra. So we're going to use the um, what we know about what it means for something to be a Lie algebra representation, and we're going to find the only um, and and what we're going to so we're going to find the possible Lie algebra representations of, of, of SU of SU two, and then they're finite dimensional, so they can be by exponentiation you can get representations of the group. But let's see, so, but what we did, and maybe before I get into this, there, there's, well, maybe, maybe let me say, say something else first. Okay, so, so, so the first step, which I talked about last time, was to pick um, a U1 uh, inside SU2, or, or if you like, just pick, pick it, or a, uh, if you like, an X and Li SU2. And so if you pick some kind of a, um, some specific thing in the Lie algebra, then if you exponentiate that, you're gonna go around a circle and come back to where you started. And so that's gonna give you a, a, a U1 subgroup in here. And so what you wanna do is you, you know what the, if you take your representation and look at what the, this U1 does to it, you know that it, um, you know from the general theory of U1 representations that what the, the answer has to be some, some list of integers of, of, of the weights. That the um, so 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 this you, so you're going to get a list of integers so that's going to be you know what happens if you take the representation restrict it to u1 u1 representations you know break up into one dimensional pieces labeled by integers so you get a list of integers the what's it called the weights and there is a there's a separate argument I showed, I mentioned last time that you can you can use another element of SU2 and conjugate it by it and then show that that swaps the, the weights to negative weights. And, and these are symmetric. Um, symmetric about uh, zero. Okay, so if, if, if you have a positive, if you have a, if a positive weight occurs in this list, then the, ne the, negative, the negative of it also has to occur. 
Okay. So, so this is kind of the easy part of easy part of this. But then the, the second part of it, where it gets where it gets quite tricky, is what you do and, and where you you start using the um, and actually, I guess that this is the point at which you have you're, you're really using the Lie algebra. Here, though, I guess at this point, um, you, when you had to pick an element of Lie algebra, so that so the standard thing to do is to choose this to be um, what I call S3, which is, is, is the three direction, or if you like, this, the Z direction, if you think this is um, angular momentum. But it's what, what, anyway, the element I was calling S3 will we'll pick at that, and because and, and this list of weights will depend upon which, um, which, one we, which one we picked, and we're gonna pick, pick that one. Okay, but then what you do, then the, the next part is the tricky part, and what you do is you, and, and what's tricky is that this is a, this is a real vector space. This is real three-dimensional. But if you want to, um, the, the, the problem is that the, the other elements in here besides S3, S1 and S2, have some kind of complicated non-trivial commutation relations with S3. And once you diagonalize S3, um, you really don't know anything interesting about what S1 and S2 are doing separately. But what you do know is, um, is, is that you is, is that you can if you, if you take a certain complex linear combination of S1 and S2, something really nice happens. And so what you want to do is you want to complexify. And I'll I'm gonna write a symbol for let me write a symbol for this is that Lee. Let me just write it this way. And, and, and for now, I'll say more about this maybe later towards the end when we get into the, what this relationship between this and a tensor product. But what this really means right now is that instead of, this is all real linear combinations of basis elements in, in the Lie algebra of SU2. This says that, that you should also, you should take all complex linear combinations. Okay. So, so this, this is a real vector space. This is a complex vector space. And if you think about it, if you take all, so, 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 so this is all skew adjoint two by two complex matrices. If you allow yourself to multiply not by real numbers but also by complex by imaginary numbers, then you're going to you, you actually get all two, you get all two by two complex matrices. Again, the, the S means you have to have trace zero, but 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 so so this is actually the same thing as the Lie algebra of SL two C. So if you take yeah, anyway, so, so, so this is all two by two complex matrices with trace, trace zero, make up this Lie algebra. And it's, it's, it's just all complex linear combinations of, of these guys. And actually, what's, so what's gonna happen is something funny when we, we do this, we're actually gonna end up, so notice, so note, um, so we'll, we'll, we'll end up, we'll, we will we'll end up, Constructing, you know, classifying all SL, all 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 finite dimensional okay. So actually, so so it, it, it looks like we're actually. By doing this, where it looks like we're, we've moved to a more complicated problem of what happens, um, you know, for, for the complex group, but it's uh, but it but it turns out that the that, that ha having the complex numbers to play with actually makes every I mean, it makes the whole arg arguments much simpler. There are a lot of things that you can do which you couldn't do before, and then and, and so it turns out the the classification of the S of the finite dimensional SL two C representations is going to be the same. Well, anyway. Uh, the, Anyway, it's, it's essentially the, the same thing as, as for SU2. Once you know the SU2 ones, you'll, you, this will also tell you the SL2C one. So, so, so we've kind of moved to this complex world. And the, the whole point of doing this was to define um, S plus minus. Okay. So the idea was that what you should do is take not, not just a, Real linear combination S one and S two, but take this specific, um, this this specific complex linear combination. 
then what happens is you get a, um, and th then, then what you do is you compute, um, well, th then, so, so it turns out, so, so this thing, and I won't go through the computations again, uh, this again, I mentioned them last time in your notes, but you, in, instead of just computing the Lie brackets between S1, S2, and S3, you look at the Lie brackets of S plus minus with S3, and you find that the structure of that bracket that tells you something interesting. And so what you do is you, 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 you now use the bracket So, so you had it. So the, I mean, so, so so you can compute what once you've defined this thing and you know the brackets between S one, S two, and S three. You can compute the brackets between S plus, S minus, and S three, and then you use the the definition of what it means to be a Lie algebra representation, which is that it, it means that you this is a map that preserves Lie bracket relations, and so you end up with Lie, bra Lie bracket operations between these operators between these operators, okay? And so, so everything then, the idea is that everything else you're gonna do, all the information you're gonna get about these Lie algebra representations are gonna come from the fact that your Lie algebra representation is given by knowing these operators and you've got some, and, and you've got these nice, uh, and, and you know something about the commutators of these things. And what, and for, for instance, the, the fact that, so the fact that this guy, what you know about U1 tells you that this guy is going to have integer eigenvalues, which are the weights. And what you know about the, um, and, and these commutation relations between these operators tell you that these guys will change, will, the plus one will change the weight by, move the weight up by plus two, the minus one will move the weight down by minus two. Okay, and so, so then what you end up with, with is this picture for what an arbitrary, um, what an arbitrary representation looks like. It's gonna it look, look something like, I don't really like, like this. It, it, it's a bunch of, it's a bunch of one dimensional vector spaces and you call and see that which, which start at some mi minus some integer and, and then, and then at, end up at some plus some, other integer, and, and and what this n means is this is a, a a copy of C with u1 acting on it by e to the i theta goes to the i e to the i n theta, and then look at then the, the symmetry property of the weights tells you that if you have weight n you have to weight minus n, and then you have a then you have the fact that if you if you act with this pi minus okay so so let's put yeah. So then, then you're also going to have a C n minus two C minus n plus two, and what and what you have is you have you have these operators. So you have pi prime of s plus s plus. It takes you it take, always increases you by two, so it, it goes in here. Plus, okay. and then you have the, and the, these are often called them um, raising operators. They raise, they increase the, they increase the weight by two, and then you have these um, operators going in the other direction, which is pi, pi, pi prime of s minus, and then yeah. But anyway, so you so you've got these these guys. Okay, so 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 this is what this kind of kind of tells you. You got more or less everything. Yeah, you know, this gives you a, as a Lie algebra representation. This gives you a complete picture of, of the structure of the um, of, of, of the representation that you've got. It's anyway. You know, you know what the list of weights is, 
And, and this kind of tells you that the list of weights has to be all, um, all integers um, with from n to, to minus n, and where you where you 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 you, you change them by two by two. So this and this is this is the spin n over two. Yeah. Irreducible representation. And so, for instance, the case the case n is equal to one. Then there's just there's just this, just this and this. The um. And the, 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 the case n is equal to n is equal to two. There's two, zero, and this. And you can you, anyway. You, you can work out what these things are. And the, the I haven't kind of given you the full. You have to be a bit careful. So there, there's some confusing stuff in the which I, which I work through there in the chapter where you have to kind of prove. You have, you have to be a bit careful because the, the, the pro, just, just just knowing these commutation relations. You have to be a little bit careful with your argument to make sure that that nothing funny happens. That, for instance, you don't you, you don't um, the thing you might worry about is that is that this sequence here kind of splits. That there's some you have to worry about this. This is called a highest weight because if you apply this to it, you're going to get zero. So pi prime of s plus v is equal to zero. Okay, and this is called the lowest weight. The pi prime of s minus is zero. What you, what you have to worry about is that there is at some place in the middle of the sequence where the things the thing splits in two, and you've got an, another vector, which is the lowest weight here, and another vector which is the highest weight here. So you, you have to do a little bit of a tricky um, argument involving the um, these commutation relations in order to show that that doesn't happen. That that's the tricky part of the argument. Okay, so th this is this. Well, um, actually, maybe just stop for a minute here. This, uh, any questions about this picture? This is um, yes, Professor. Really quick. So, um, is this a direct? This is a direct product of Lie group or Lie algebra representations, correct? Well, this is, so, 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 so this this is a single. This is the structure of, of, of a single spin over n over two. And, and so as a vector as a vector space, this is what I've been calling kind of pi n pi prime n over two on and it's on C. If you count these, there's n plus one of them. Okay. So it, it I mean this 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 is kind of a picture. This is kind of a, a, a this is a this is a decomposition of of this rep, this representation. This spin n over two representation into one-dimensional pieces, and I'm explicitly showing you what the what the weights are, what S three is doing, and I'm explicitly showing you what S plus and minus are doing. As you, and, okay, does that help? Um, yes, and so so pi prime of n over two, the spin n half um, n over two representation, it, it is a representation of the Lie algebra, though, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, Lie algebra. Yes, yeah. so, so yes, yeah. so, so this is a representation of the, it's a pi prime of the, of the Lie algebra of the, of S, of S two two. But but and, and the other fun thing to notice that that all of it, you see all, all of these things, the way I've written all these things, um, you. You almost you almost kind of have to put in complex linear combinations. So what you so you actually find find that this this is actually not just a so um, once you've done this for for SU two, it turns out you've also done it for SL two C. It's the same thing. So so this so this guy is, is a an irreducible representation of SU two, but he's also an irreducible representation of SL two C, which is at the Lie algebra level is the same as SU two, but you you you're thrown in complex numbers. And um, when you're when you're describing going from one copy of C to a next, is it that the representation is, is that that the representation is is from, um, being permutated or no no no? So 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 what this sorry what this means here is that if um. So, so what, 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 what I'm doing here, what, what, what I'm trying to say here is that if um, V is an element of, 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 of C minus N, okay? And in particular, in particular, in this case, it means it's the lowest weight. So, so it's, it's got then, so, so in particular, this is, this is, this is gonna, it's gonna be true that pi prime of 
s minus v is equal to zero. It's the lowest weight. Okay. But then, so this map takes any vector in here to, to a vector in here. So then pi prime of s plus v is an element of c to the minus n plus two. Okay. So, 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 so this is what, what that error what that arrow is supposed to be saying. It's saying that I, I've broken this guy up into one dimensional subspaces. And if you're in this one dimensional subspace and you apply this linear operator, you end up in this one dimensional subspace. Okay. 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 Yeah, this, it's, a, it's a somewhat confusing package of information, but that, that's what it is. Any other questions about this? Okay, and I thought maybe 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 just to say one reason for saying this, just to say a couple words about what happens in the. Um, let's see here. So so there's anyway a, a kind of amazing thing about this story is that this, this so in this course I'm sticking to 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 um, talking about certain specific Lie groups and this and the specific Lie groups that. Are, that, and, and I'm telling you a lot about SU2 and about SL2C, but the, um, there's, if, typically when we teach a, teach a class like this in our graduate classes, what we want to do is we also, we, we want to try and use exactly the same techniques here and to, to try to classify all, so, so let me just say it this way. So let's just say similar or techniques classify all your reps of all, and then you can either so 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 the analogs that the the generalization of SU two this works for are what are called compact Lie groups. Groups, and the and, and the analog of the um, generalization of this SU two the algebra, which becomes an SL two C the algebra, is what are called complex. Um, semi-simple Lie algebra. And, and, and maybe, maybe an, an example here, so an, an example for, for example, a typical example would be SU3. Okay. So let's say that instead of looking by two by two um, unitary matrices would determine it, well, and you look at three by three unitary matrices, determine one. You can ask the same question. How do I classify the representations? How do I construct them? And that's typically a topic for a, our first year graduate class. But, but, but this, this, the idea just is, I won't actually go through this, but I just want to point out that some, this is something that I'm not doing in this class and which you'll often, which, which is the sort of thing that physics um, classes often do start to go through, especially at a more advanced level. Of, if, if there's a typical graduate class on, on representation theory, we'll then start and, and go through the story. And one of the reasons for going through the story is that um, you know, historically, the representations of SU3 were very important because they, uh, the, the, these representations kind of class of, are, there's an approximate SU3 symmetry under the strong interactions. And if you wanted to understand strongly interacting particles in the, in the 60s, you, you did it by using SU3 representation theory. And then, but, but just to say that the, the, the story there is you, you do the same kind of thing. One is you pick, so um, you pick um, maximal set of commuting Meeting U1. So what happens when, when you go to, to, to bigger Lie groups is in SU2, you know, once you've picked a, a single U1, um, if you try and pick any other U1, it's gonna have it's gonna ha be, have elements that don't commute with your original U1. So you can't but 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 if you go to like SU3, it turns out you once you pick one U1, you can you can also pick another U1 that, that commutes. So you you, you can Anyway, you can try and do this. You can try and you know, generalize this construction of this, this diagonal e to the i theta, e to the minus i theta that we did for SU2. Think about what happens for SU3, and you find that you can make 
you can make two such two different such things which which commute with each other. And this and this is called the um, this, this this number is called the rank of the group of the of the group or the or the, or the layout the algebra. And so I've, I've just kind of told you about the rank one case, but you can go to higher rank and then you get, um, so then, then, then the weights, weights form a diagram. Diagram in Z to the rank G. Okay. So in, in, instead of, here we have this nice kind of, there, there, you know, zero is here. Here we have this kind of symmetric diagram of, of points lying on the, on the integer points on the real, of, of integer points in one dimension. And there's a, and there's a flipping symmetry. Well, what happens for, the, for these groups is that they, um, if you get a representation and ask how does it restrict to, 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 these, to these U1s, you're going to get a. Um, you're, you're going to get not just one in it. Um, you're going to get sets of sets of, of, of rank. Anyway, you're, you're going to get sets of. They're going to be characterized by sets of integers of, of this number, not just one integer. They don't just break up. The, the, the one-dimensional state space subspaces just break up, break up into um, things that are characterized by more integers corresponding to the bigger rank. And then what happens? And then you have an analog of the reflection symmetry. You have, it turns out you have reflections in several different directions. There's, there's something more interesting and complicated called the bile group that tells you about what the reflections do. And then what you do is, um, so break up, so, um, anyway, so you break up, up the rest of the um, complex the algebra in uh, plus or minus pieces. Okay. So you, you have the same thing that you know you have just that you, you had S3 and then you, then S1 and S2, once you complexified, you could break up into one plus thing and one minus thing. Well, what happens? Let me say it for, for SU3. For SU3, you have is, is rank two. So you actually you, you have two. Let me actually draw a little. Well, I mean, let me, I don't want to spend too much time on this. But, but for what, what happens for SU3, for instance, is it's rank two. So all the irreducible representations are classified by diagrams of the, um, in, 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 of the, integer, in the integer points in the plane. And they've got certain, and, and the symmetries are kind of. Anyway, they, and, and, and with, with these, have, these have certain symmetries. And then what you do is, is you, the rest of the, of the com, complex Lie algebra, so SU3 is eight dimensional, and, you, and you, you've picked out two directions using this, so you've got six remaining. So then what you do is you, you throw in complex numbers, and those six, now those six complex numbers break into th three, three positive and three negative. And then instead of having um, one kind of raising operator and, and one kind of lowering operator, you have three kinds of raising operators and three kinds of lowering operators. And they, they move you around this diagram. And now they move you in a complicated way around it in two dimensions, not in one dimension. And, uh, but, but it's exactly the same game. You, you, use the, um, you, use the commuta you use the commutation relations to analyze the possibilities. And the, and the, the fundamental theorem you end up proving is just uh, something like this, and it says that the pattern of these things that these things have to fall in, fall in, in, into certain patterns in um, you know it, it, uh, these weights have, have to have to have to form certain patterns, and so that's pretty much it. So it's a, it's kind of a long story to really work out in, in detail. There's a lot of beautiful mathematics if you do it, but I'm just telling I'm just saying this partly because um, as, as an excuse for for for, for not going there at all in this class. And, and, and you'll notice that if, if you do take a, um, physicists often if they teach you, uh, if, they, if they get into this topic or this at all, they'll kind of immediately try and, and, and start telling you about this generalization, mainly because they want to be able to do SU3 if they're, um, 
historically, the, the people who are the real experts at this were people who also worked on kind of grand unified theories. They were trying to come up with theories with like SU5 or SF10 symmetry. So they needed the, the, full, the full technology. Okay, but that, that, that's, anyway, let me just stop there. That's kind of an aside, but any questions about this, this stuff? So is there like a precise representation theoretic statement that says that this restriction representa restricted representation completely characterizes the representation of SUN? The, res the that, that, you mean the, the weight diagram? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so, so by, by restriction, you mean the restriction to U1 or to- or, or Well, to whatever the maximal right to, to the U1, national torus, yeah. The um, if you care about those. I don't, I don't remember. Uh, um, is that even true? Yeah, it, that, 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 is, that is true. I mean, it, the, actually, if, if you do this, the, the way this theory works out in this case is for, um, it, 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 you, you start to realize that everything, to re this, this whole structure all follows from, from actually just understanding what, what this guy is. So you just have to get your hands on, on, on this highest weight and then if you have if you have your your highest weight, you have a vector in here, and you understand all these operators, then you could just um, you could construct the rest of the representation by applying this guy to it repeatedly, and you can get the full data. So, so so the classification really, and this is often called this is why it's often called among mathematicians is often called the sometimes called Cartan Weil theory or highest weight theory. So and and, it, and it's true, and and then the theorem that you prove is 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 this uniqueness of the of the highest weight, yeah. But if you if you, if you know there's only one irreducible representation with with a certain highest weight, that's true. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Is there a question? Okay. So let me get on to then the then the rest of what's in this chapter eight. Well, actually, may, okay. So maybe one more piece of of technology. So let me get on to um. Let me I'll kind of start backwards and start with, with saying something about what's what's at the last the last part of chapter eight, which is this notion of a Casimir operator. So, and, and, and maybe also to, to say some more about the general theory. So, so there, there are two kind of main techniques for, for, for getting your hands on an understanding uh, and you're just a representation of, uh, of one of these compact A groups or of, uh, co of, of the corresponding Lie algebra, the complex Lie algebra. And that's to, to, to study the possible highest weights and then to label the representation by the highest weight. And so for instance, we labeled it by, you know, we call it the spin n over true representation, but that n was the, 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 was the highest weight. But, but there, there's an alternate, um, uh, anyway, there, there's an alternate kind of Technology that you can use to get to get your hands on 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 this theory, and it's this theory of um, Casimir operators. And maybe just just and and so what I want to say here. Let's see, I want to do this. Okay. Oh, so so now what you so so to say this in a very general way, I think you had this in maybe one of your problems, and you you had that the um, recall. That you had something called the killing form, which was a bilinear form on the real Lie algebra given by by this guy. You take the, um, the trace of uh, I don't want to do it of, of the you, you you look at the composition of doing the the adjoint action of X. So, so, so this is what I would call pi prime of, of, of X, where pi is the adjoint representation. And with, and if you, for, if you do this with this guy, then I'm not, th then it turns out that this is actually, this is bilinear in X and Y. And the, the harder part of the theory is, is then you then, what you then show is that this, you, you characterize the, um, the cases where this is going to work nicely, which are these, I call, I call these compact Lie groups or complex semi-simple algebras. You, you, one way of characterizing them is that this is going to work nicely if this is if this is non-degenerate. In other words, there's no x. There, there's so if this 
if um, this is non-degenerate. In other words, x, x equals 0 implies x equals 0. So, I mean, in, in, the, um, in the case of a compact Lie algebra, it turns out this is, this is negative definite. And, but if you, um, if you complexify and if you're working with a, the complex thing, then you can throw in i's. And then it, um, depending on how many i's you've got, you, um, yeah, it, it, it may be, uh, it, it, it doesn't have to be, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be negative or positive. But anyway, on, on the real Lie algebra, it, for these for for things I guess you too it, it, it's it's negative definite, but the um but but, but in general if, if you can you can you can do this for you know for so all this requires is no, is knowing about the adjoint representation, and that you know for any Lie algebra and and if it's non degenerate then if it's not, if, if you have a non degenerate bilinear form, then you can um. What, 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 what you, you can use it to, to identify vectors and vectors and dual vectors. And one thing, one thing you can do with this is you then define, that's what I'm thinking, what I'm calling it, omega, which is equal to the, so, so, so you, you pick, pick some basis. So I is equal to one to the dimension of the G. And then you take, you just take xi squared, or xi is an element of the, it, 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 it is a basis element. And then, and then you use, I guess maybe, maybe the right way, to, one way to say this is that, is that I've, um, okay, so let's just, let's just say ortho, orthonormal. So you, you when, when we say, saying that I can, I can now, if I have a non-degenerate, if I have a non-degenerate um, bilinear form, I can find an orthonormal basis, and then I, and, and then I just write the sum, the, the sum of the squares and of, of, of these guys. Uh, so, sorry, I should I should say this I should say this differently. So omega, maybe it's better. Let me say it this way: omega in Let me say. Let me say it this way: Omega is an operator in the representation pi prime, and it's pi prime of xi squared. So, so, this, so you're doing something kind of funny. Everything else you've done with the algebra before. Well, I, I mean, no, I guess when you can construct commutators, you get this. But, but anyway, you're you're taking the square of the um, of these operators, and then what what you show is is that this this you show that this operator is kind of independent, independent of the basis. But if you change, if you change bases, you're going to get anyway. You're, you're, going, to, you're going to get uh, a, a, an equivalent operator, and then you then you show omega high prime commutes with all i. So what? So so you so what you've actually you show that when you computed, and then this is where you have to use this is where you have to use this um this this definition. You have to use the existence of this uh, this killing form. The killing form is defined this way and has has nice invariance properties. And so what you show what you show is that you constructed an operator which commutes with, with you know. So, so these are all the operators that tell you about the representation, and you've you've constructed a new and very non-trivial operator, which it turn, turns out um, commutes with, with all of them. So, 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 so this guy can be some. So, by kind of an analog of Schur's lemma, when if if you've got an operator, if you have an irreducible representation, and you've got a an operator that commutes with all of the representation operators, then that guy has to be. So basically, Schwer's lemma in this Lie algebra version implies that um, omega pi prime is equal to lambda pi one on an 
here it is for representation. So in other words, if somebody, so so one way, and 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 this is this is just some uh, so, so, some complex. For now, let's just say it, it's lambda it, pi. It, 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 it's just some some complex number. So there's 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 some number. So the 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 other way of characterizing representations of Lie algebras of this kind is going to is going to be not by the highest weight, but by by this number. And and, and you'll and okay. So, so let me just say then say a word about how we're going to um. I want to do that now. Yeah. Actually, maybe, let, let, me, let me just just leave this here for now, and then as I, as I do the explicit. So, if, if you, whenever I do an explicit construction of a representation, what what I'd really like to do is I'd like to. For one thing, I'd like to do is, is to know which representation is it, and and the idea is to figure out which representation I've constructed is to look. One one way is to look for highest weight vectors, and to, so to actually write down the condition to be a highest weight vector and find the solutions to it and see which ones you've got. The other way, way to do it is to just take, um, take, take, take this guy and then just, just pick any random vector in your representation and hit it with this guy and see, see what, which one you get. And so those are the two ways of telling if somebody hands you a, a representation of a, of, a, of a Lie group of this kind there are two ways of telling, and, and of telling, um, well, one way of anyway. There, 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 there are two ways of tell of how of figuring out how to break it into irreducibles and telling which irreducibles you've got. And what one way is to look, look for um, look for highest weight vectors and then find their highest weights, and that will tell you what the representation the, the irreducible representations inside this representation are. The other thing to do is, is to look at. You know, basically diagonalize this, at this operator. So see what the eigenvalues of, of of this operator are, and see what this guy acts on. And those numbers are going to tell you um, which here is representations you've got. Okay. So 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 that's just that's gen this, so what I've been doing here. This is general philosophy, which is kind of applicable pretty, pr applicable pretty much to any the group or the algebra. You can try and do this, and it, it works very nicely for this for the class of these where you have a non degeneracy condition. But let me go. Let, let me now go start. Go back to something much, much more, um, much, much more, con much, much more concrete. And, and so, because as I was kind of saying at the beginning of what, at the end of last time, that the, the problem with this whole setup is that I haven't actually, I haven't actually constructed. I've kind of classified all representations. I said if you've got a representation, it's going to have to have these properties. It's going to have to have these weights. It's going to have to have highest weights with certain properties. It's going to have to have this operator is going to have to act on it as a scalar and all this stuff, but I haven't actually constructed any actual representations for you besides the ones you already knew about, which was the, the trivial representation, the, the spinner representation, vector representation. So let's. So what? So what I want to write next to the part of the story is to write down explicitly these representations, and there's there's two. I'm going to use. So in, in chapter eight, there's there's two different actually. So, so maybe for, first to say where this is going. So just let me let me just kind of summar, summarize where this is going. So constructions of representations. So first, first what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do for, for SU2, there's a very nice way of, you, you can get all um, representations of SU2 by looking at the um, uh, polynomials. Let, let me just say, let's just look at polynomials on C2. And I'll go over this very quick, quickly again. There's a lot more in the, in the book. And then for 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 SO three, I mean, in principle, you're you're, you're done here now because um, at the SO every SO three representation um, give, gives you an SU two course has to correspond has to give you it gives you an SU two representation. So you can always um, you can you can just 
you can kind of show that half the SU2 representations are actually the SO3 representations. But, it, but in general, there, there's another way of doing it. There's an, an interesting other way of talking about SO3 representations, which is functions on the, 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 the unit sphere inside R3. So you, you, you look at functions on R3, and then you realize that, well, if you, if you do rotations, there, that's not going to change the, the distance from the origin. So you might, so just to, to see what happens if you act on the functions by rotations, you might as well fix the distance to the origin. And, and then, 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 then the question is, how does, that, how does this break up? And, and maybe the thing to say here, one, one thing to notice, again, to, to, to where, where we're going later in the class, is that um, I'm doing something, so, so far, everything I was doing in this class before where I was telling you about, um, I was telling you about representations of these groups, I was telling you about finite dimensional representations. And I was kind of saying, well, you can just, you can really just understand these, um, these representations and these, the operators that you get as just, as just matrices. You know, you write out your finite dimensional, your finite dimensional representation, it's just, a, it's just a list of numbers, it's a column vector, you act on, on it with um, an operator, that operator is just a matrix, and so it's just a matter of finding some matrices. Now, I'm doing something funny here. So what I'm doing here now is that I'm not, I'm actually getting all, all of the representations here at once and all of the representations here at once. And so, so these, are, these are infinite dimensional. Okay. So these constructions I'm about to do, um, all of a sudden I, I, I kind of, they're, they're gonna start to look different because I'm, I'm not just playing some game you are trying to construct the pi of G as a matrix or pi prime of X as a matrix. I'm trying to actually get um, operations of the group or by getting operations of the Lie algebra on, 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 on an infinite dimensional space of polynomials and an infinite dimensional space of functions on S2. But these, um, these, these infinite dimensional spaces though are reducible representations. If you break them up into irreducible pieces, the irreducible pieces are all finite dimensional. And the, the, the glory of these constructions is that these constructions contain all irreducible representations and all, but, but just, but just one, co one copy of each. So this, this guy contains all of the irreducible representations of SU2 and then one you know, with, with, with one copy of each, this guy contains all the irreducible representations of SO3, one copy of each. So, and then what, but, but now, now our operators so notice, uh, now our operators, you know, act on functions. Okay, so they act on this interdimensional space of functions and they're, um, so they're, they're gonna be um, differential operators. So if you have some differential operator acting on some space of functions and it preserves some subspace, then you, know, you could in principle pick a basis of that subspace and, uh, and write this differential operator as just the, the matrix of how it acts on that, on that um, basis. But, um, but, but, but now the, you know, through, through, through much of the rest of the class, mainly we're gonna start thinking of uh, representations of, 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 of our Lie algebra as, as differential operators acting on some infinite dimensional function space. And in this case, this infinite dimensional function space kind of breaks up into nice finite dimensional pieces. When we start talking about what happens with a, a free particle, then it turns out that the, um, you, you, to describe a free particle moving around, you're actually gonna need the full infinite dimensional space of functions. It doesn't, the, the irreducible representation you want is gonna be infinite, infinite dimensional. So you can't, um, it doesn't break up into finite dimensional pieces anymore. And all you can do is talk about the, talk about it at, as functions or as wave functions, if you like, and, and talk about the, the algebra representation as, as in terms of differential operators. Okay, and then, then maybe, so, so now this is what I'll, I'll quickly say some more about this, but then let me kind of say something about that there, there's another philosophy of this. And one is to, um, so another way is to pick 
um, a de de defining, let's, let's say the defining representation, representation V, and then look at, you know, find, the, find the rest of the representations, or oops, by, by looking at, you know, inside V, enter V. Okay, so, so, so this is what I'll, I'll, I'll start on. I'll, I'll say a lot more next time, maybe a little bit at the end if I get to here. But there, there, it turns out if you actually have a, um, if you've got a vector space, you know, you, you can take a direct sum of vector spaces, but you can also take the so-called tensor product, which I'll explain later. And the, uh, another philosophy for how to get, um, it, so, so, so another way to, to get, so, so for SU2, or it would be C2 plus C2 plus plus C2. Okay. So, 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 so there, there's a, another way of, of trying to construct S, of, of trying to construct representations that would actually, um, you know, be, be the ones that are classified so far. Would be to, to start with the spinner representation, or the, the qubit, if you like, and then start taking the tensor and take the take the tensor product a bunch of times. And this this is going to have dimension two to the k, where these are the where the k of these. And then, the, but but then the, what makes this what makes this kind of difficult is that you find is that it um you, you, you the this this will be a representation of, of SU two also, but it's going to it's not an irreducible representation. So how this guy breaks up into irreducible pieces then becomes becomes a hard problem you have to work out. So, but so anyway, but I'll, I'll get to this. But, but these are pretty much the um, the main constructions that you might see. That's how that's some, how somebody will actually produce um, these irreducible representations of SU two. Either they'll be polynomials on C two. That's kind of in some sense the simplest one. Then, if there actually is so three representations, you may think about them as so-called spherical harmonics, which we'll see as functions on, on S two, or you may just be you may construct them by taking a bunch of a bunch of C twos, taking this product of them, and then kind of symmetrizing and anti-symmetrizing and do very, doing various things to try to pick out an irreducible subspace in here. Okay. So the, these are the these are the ways of getting Game representations. Okay, so let me for let me kind of quickly quickly go through go through one and two, and then if I got some time, I'll start telling you some more about tensor products. Let's see. Okay, so then, okay, let's see. So where was this? Okay. Okay, so so here's the so 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 for one, so for let's do, let's do one. Okay, so okay, and, and that so 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 this is a, a general thing which I, I mean I, I kind of worked out this argument somewhere early on in the book, and I realized that the the way I've written this down in several places this is quite confusing. So I'm trying to write up a less confusing version of this, and hopefully this will be done by Thursday. But I haven't quite succeeded yet. But there's a, a, a general principle, which is that. And, and, and this argument is given, I think, even in, in the first chapter or so of the book, that if you know that if, um, if G acts on a set, set M, then um, by, let's say, let's say by M goes to G dot M, then and it acts on functions on M by taking F, F of M so that goes, goes to, so if you, now by F of M, I, I, mean the, I mean the functional relation that if you plug M in here, you get, you get, a, you get a number. Then here you, um, 
to the function. Here you have to act by an inverse dot. And it's just because of, you know, if this is a non-commutative non -commut, non group, you have to, to do it this way in order to get the, um, to, to get this to be an action to get the, to, to get the group law to work out on this guy. And, but but, the, the, but this, this, is, this is a confusing formula. And what I'm afraid is that I, I've used a version of this formula in this, in, like for this problem is here, and I think I've done it in a confusing way. So let me, I'm hoping to, let, let me try and get, and, I may try to do a little bit better job on that, but let me but let me tell you what the, the bottom line here is. So so here, here m is equal to c two, and, and and we're gonna if the, if, so you can do this for all for all functions on on c two, but in general, I mean, if you try to look at all functions, then you're gonna have some anyway. You're you're gonna have a much Anyway, t t talking about all functions, you, you then have to start restricting yourself down to some nicely behaved set of functions in order to get some kind of representation you have any hope of analyzing. And the, the thing which behaves really nicely is, is to just take the polynomial functions. But here, n is equal to C2, F for polynomial functions. So SU2X on C2, then it's going to act on functions of C2 by, by this formula, where you have to kind of understand what this really means. And then what I'm saying, but then you explicitly want to do this not for any function, but just for polynomial functions. And that's and, and I try and work this out in, in, in the section. And what you find is you find the irreducible. What, what you find is that when you when you do this. When you act by SU two on this on the on, on polynomial functions in this way, the, the thing that you don't change is you, you don't you don't change the degree of the if you, if you have a monomial of a certain degree you don't change you don't change the degree of the monomial. Okay, so so the irreducible pieces. Well, pieces are 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 the, are the um, are, are, are the homogeneous polynomials. Of, of a given degree. And say so of a given degree n. So and, and again, this is this this is where your integer n that classifies the representation is going to come from. So it's going to be, for instance, so e.g. So you, you want to look at all functions of z1, z2 that are given by some um, some number times z1 to the n plus some other number times z1 to the n minus 1, z2 plus and then keep going until you've changed all the z1s to z2s and you get an a n z to z2 to the n. And so, 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 so these are these are characterized by um, these are given by so 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 polynomials of degree of homogeneous polynomials of degree n and two variables are given by n plus one one numbers you know a zero up to a n. And, and 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 this this is this is this is this really is the spin n of our two representation. So so this actually turns out to be exactly the spin n of our two representation. And so I won't work I won't work through the um, so you need to check you need to show. Show that that this is that this is a construction of the spin n over two representation. Okay, and so 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 one way one way to do this is to figure out you know to make sense of that 
of, of that SU2 action on it make, and, and, and make sense of what the, um, of what that is at the infinitesimal level, what the differential operators you get. And, and I won't, um, I, I, have, I have these, I, so these formulas are all derived there, but you basically want to show that, um, yeah, I don't really want to kind of work these things out. Let's see. Anyway, so, so find, I think I actually wrote this down here. Yeah, so, so you find from the definition of pi, pi, if you, if you differentiate it, that, that pi prime of S, um, S plus, let's say, is equal to uh, minus I Z1 P D Z2. And now I've got this um, backwards then. Okay. Um, any, anyway, and, and then you, um, okay. Any, anyway, I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I, so, so this is worked out in the notes. And if I try and just do, do, do this again, but, but you, you can try to f find the, um, so, 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 so find the formula for it, for this guy, and then show that you, um, at pi, prime of S plus, um, you know, some, some monomial of degree n, of degree n, of degree n, and is equal to zero, has, 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 has up to scalars, has one solution. It's going to be, the, it's going to be the things that have no DZZ2 in them. So I, I think I've, I've actually written, anyway, the way, the way I've written it, this, I guess this is, this is then the highest, highest weight vector. Because this, this guy is going to have, um, this guy is the thing that, that if you hit him with this guy, there's no Z2s in him. So you're gonna you're gonna get um, zero. Whereas if 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 you hit if you hit this guy with this thing, you're gonna get rid of this z two and you're gonna add a z one. So you're gonna move over here. So you can see that th this operator explicitly realizes that kind of abstract thing that I was talking about earlier. That there's an, an abstract guy that takes you from one space. There, there's a there, 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 there's a Anyway, these, these pi primes of s plus and minus are operators that take you from a vector in here to a vector in here. But you could you could explicitly see it very easily what it's doing on, on monomials. Because now now your weight, your your subspaces with a fixed weight are just these specific mon specific monomials. Yeah. And then the um I, I think it's actually is that in your uh, I, th I think it's actually one of your one of your problem sets. Um, Resolution that that's 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 the highest weight. Weight vector, and you can check check what its weight is, and you can you can see that you can see that this is actually the spin over two representation. Or, or um, compute compute the the, the Casimir operator. Operator here, and this this is a second order operator, yeah. and then up, up, you know, apply this this you know to 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 any monovial. And, and, and you're going to get you're going to get um, you're going to find that that, that and, and you're going to find out that anything in here is actually an eigen vector for that operator with eigenvalue given by the um, by the, the lambda pi whatever which characterizes this that spin represent spin in representation. And I think I think this was one of your maybe one of your problem sets. Okay, so that's that's this. So. I, I won't go through any more details about this. And if the, um, I think it, uh, the warning is that in this discussion, the, the way I've gone from 
the way I've written down the action of the group on polynomials is a bit confusing, but anyway, um, and I may try to do better, but are there, are there any questions about this, about the SU2 story? Um, no, not, not, not in this case. Sorry, or, it, it, any, uh, or Laplace of a model metric on C2. I'm not, I, I, I don't know. I mean, normally, you, you, anyway, it, it, it's a second order operator. I don't think you would normally. And anyway, I, yeah, yeah. You, you tell me. I, th I think it's one of you on your problem set. To, 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 you're supposed to derive it and mm -hmm. look at it, and you tell me whether that's what you think the Laplace operator is. Uh, okay. Because it, it, it's, I, I don't normally think of. I tend to think of the Laplace operator as something that I'm working with on real manifolds, and so it's if you have a complex manifold like C2, it's a bit confusing. So. Okay, but then the um, maybe the, then to. So then the next part of this, the next construction was about what happens. So, 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 so this is actually all, this is actually all computationally very, very easy. I mean, if you're not, if you're doing things correctly in this case, you're just talking about simple, you're just computing what, what, what's happening on monomials in, 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 two, in two variables. And, it, it's, and, and what happens if you differentiate them by one of the monomials and by one of the variables and multiply by the other. It's a very, very Simple, and I mean, you can if you want. You so so you, you can you can treat, but you can, you can see what would happen if you wanted to go back to your picture as um, as matrices. You could um, try, try and write down. You, you could, in principle, write down the matrix for um, one of the, for for for, the, for one of these representations for for n representation using by, by looking at what these differential operators do. But I think, but then you'll see that that's that's actually a very a complicated story. Whereas um, thinking of the Lie algebra operators just as that, you know, like this, this is actually very easy. Okay. Then, then the next part of the story is: to, is there something? So is, is what happens for for it, is, is that there's kind of an, an alternate version of this for SO three. Um, And I, um, and and this again. I mean, I could have not only have I, am I kind of running out of time, but but it's also this actually then becomes a fairly this becomes a fairly complicated story because what you're doing is what you do is look at look at the action of SO three. Okay, so 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 three takes vectors in R3 and rotates them around, that, that you know. But if you, um, if you have a function on, on, functions on R3, it also changes the, the function to, a, to another function on R, R3. So now what you can do is, um, but, but, but since, since the action doesn't change the, the distance to the origin, you can think of it as a, um, anyway, you, you can think of it as, as you can restrict it to just a particular radius and say, I'm just going to look at the functions on, on the sphere. Okay. You actually see, and, and then, the, then the induced action, let's just say on um, functions on the sphere of radius one. Okay. Maybe a thing to say here is th there's, this is actually also a, gives you a beautiful analog of the whole sort story of Fourier series. So if you if you think about if you've seen the story about Fourier series, for, what Fourier series really is, it's telling you. Um, so you just, so Fourier series what you do is you use u one to uh, break up up functions on the circle on S1. So I mean, one, one way of understanding Fourier series is to say that I'm, if I, 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 I'm, I look at all the functions on the circle and then I see what the U1, the induced, U1 rotates the circle. The, so there, there's an induced action on the, on the functions on S1 and the eigen, 
the, the eigenfunctions of this action are these e to the i n thetas. And so I get this really, gives it, I get a nice basis. So, so you, you get a nice basis. A function on, on, on S1. Or period, you get a nice basis of the periodic functions. It, it's just the e to the i n theta basis, if you like. But now here, so th this, this story in some sense is a generalization of this is that the um, is that representation theory theory gives um, you get a nice you use SO3 to break up functions on S2 on S2 and you get a nice the, 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 the irreducible represent the, the irreps of SO3 give a nice basis. basis. Okay. Okay, so it, it, I mean the, the, the story though actually is, is interestingly more complicated than on, on S1. On S1, because you want you know, you're using the irreducible representations of U1 to, to, to give you a basis. Well, they're all one dimensional. It's the problem with SO, SO3, what we're doing is we're saying functions on S2, S2 can be broken up into um, the, tri the tri trivial, let's take complex functions on S2, the trivial plus the um, spin one plus spin half. Well, uh, let's just say uh, there's a C2, there's a C, a C3, etc. And then if, if you restrict the action, if, if you restrict the, and the idea is that if you restrict the action of SO3 to, to this subspace here, on the subspace, it behaves like the spin n over Q. And, uh, and, and actually, sorry, I didn't, I, I, this is wrong. So, I, so these are SO3 representations. So the point is you only get, um, you, you, only, you, you, have, you, you have to have even in. So, you, so you're, all, you're not gonna, you're not gonna have this guy and you're gonna have that this guy is, is uh, odd. Yeah, right. So this is the spin N where, where N integer. And this is gonna be N and odd. So, so let's say it's, it's L n is equal to 2 L plus 1, or if you like. So, so this is the, the spin uh, n minus 1, 1, or, 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 the, or the spin L representation, you can often call, call it. Okay, so, so you're actually going to get, what, what you get when you do this is you don't get all the representations of SU2, you just get all the rotations of SO3, which correspond just to the um, to, to the to the uh, the even value. Let's see, I'm not how I done this. Did it right? Yeah. yeah, N minus one. So it, this so so it's, I should call this something else. So let me call this N plus one odd N odd N even. Uh, let me try okay. let me write it this way, sorry. This is going to be 2L plus 1. And this is the spin, spin L rim. Okay, so, so, so you, um, so, 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 so the, all, all the functions on, on S2 break up into these pieces and that the, the trickiness is, is that the pieces become higher and higher dimensional as, as you as you go up and it, but it, but it turns out that the whole there's, there's a complicated technology of dealing with these functions but that but that technology is something that you may have already seen before you often see it um, you know when people are asking are looking for solutions of some kind of differential equations or whatever these these functions naturally are going to appear. And then just to tell you what they are, they're the they're called the um, I wanna, I don't know, they're, they're called they're called the spherical harmonics, and um, the 
the company spirit spirit so 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 these the, these these basis functions so these are so, so that they're functions on the sphere which behave in, in a, they behave on, under the so3 action as this um, integral spin representation and they're they're so they're called the um, these base functions are, are, are called spherical harmonics. And they're typically written with the Y, so what's the right then is Y um, L L M of theta and phi. And so so, so the, these are the um, standard angles of in spherical coordinates that describe where where you are on on the sphere. This, this function sphere, and then this guy. So L again, L is equal to zero, one, two, up, up to an, an infinity. And and the, so and so, so these are the um, anyway. So, so 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 these things are going to lie in the spin spin L. So 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 these. These 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 are in the, the spin L represent spin L representation SO three. But then, as you increase L, you, you, you get two you get two L plus one dimensional. It's a, the the space of, of these guys for a fixed L is is um two L plus one dimensional, and it's given by so you take by by various m's that start at let's say at, at minus l and are minus l plus one up to um, l up, up, up to l minus one to l. Okay. So you take so 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 this guy is is a natural number from or something something going from zero to infinity, and but but then these guys are a choice of these things, and th these are the um, the weights of the uh, 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 of the spin L representation, and so 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 you so again you can check the um, you can check this you, you, you can check that these functions how whatever definition you've got of them actually g give you a um, the Spinel representation by computing one is to to show that the to find use the um, the high prime of s plus which in, I, I think I actually wrote it did I write it down here so you, you use the um, and I, I guess I guess I call that l l plus I think I, I wrote it, I wrote it down so in there and so you. Um, you solve. So, 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 so this guy is going to be a some kind of differential operator in terms of theta and phi, and then you solve L plus um, times 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 a, a function of theta phi is is equal to zero, and this just gives you a differential equation. You solve the differential equation. That gives you a high. That gives you a highest weight vector. That gives you. That gi that gives you your um. Gives y l l of theta phi, which is for l that it's the highest possible value of m, and then once you have this guy, you you can then get the rest of the guys by looking at the finding a differential operator that takes you down and and, and compute using that, and so so this is one way to do it or. Two is use the Casimir, and and in this case the Casimir operator is actually exactly, I mean up to normalization is is actually the um, the Laplacian. Okay. So you, if you compute the Casimir operator in this language, it's going to be the uh, it's going to be a second order invariant differential operator. It's going to be the, the Laplacian, and so. One, one way in which these um, spherical harmonics actually show up is often they're, they're, they show up in the problem that you're you're looking for the you're looking for the eigenfunctions of the, of the Laplacian, 
and then and, and then and so it's the um, looking for eigenfunctions for Laplacian is exactly the problem of exactly looking for irreducible representations or things when a Casimir acts by a scalar. Okay. Okay. So I think so. That's a good stopping point for today, um, and. Uh, and, and so I, I haven't really kind of gotten that. And so, so what I'll do on Thursday is try and go over the, um, uh, s say something about uh, tensor products and then, and, and various applications of them. Some of the material in the, um, about tensor products that's in there, uh, is, it, again, it's a little bit like this other chapter. There are a few things that are in there, which I, I just put in there because I'm gonna need them later. And maybe we may, so I may just tell you some of the more basic facts about tensor products, and then we some of the a few of the things that are in that chapter are really only going to be useful later on in the class, much later. So I won't worry about right now. But we'll do that, and then go over any other questions about the about the class. So are there are there any questions about for today about what you about all this stuff? Or also again, if you can, if you want to come back, I'll then I'll shut this down, and we can. Uh, and if you can come back for uh, for an office hour later, we can talk some more about it. Okay. Okay, but if not, then I'll, I'll, I'll hope to see you again on, on Thursday, and we'll talk talk, talk more, uh, do a review in tensor products. Okay. Okay. Bye for now. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.